Hey everybody, I'm Matt from the Creator Team, and you're watching our weekly workshop. Some of you may have already noticed that we added a kind of weird component to Creator recently called Container. Now, on its own, Container doesn't really look like much, but we added it to give you a little bit more control over layout and let you do some things that previously weren't possible right in the Creator tool. So today, I'm going to highlight the Container component along with Firebase, and we are going to add chat to our Mount Creator app. Now, all I did was duplicate our Mount Creator app from the Ionic Auth series, so I'm not going to show you how to set up Auth all over again. We're just going to use our Ionic Auth we already started with, and then we're going to add Firebase to this project to add chat. So let's go ahead, I duplicated this, open up our Mount Creator chat version, and get started. All right. So first of all, we have this home page, but we don't want to call it home anymore. We're going to rename this to chat. And as you can see, too, a nifty little feature. When we rename this to chat, the state changed to menu.chat, and our code down here that forwarded to that page automatically updated to menu chat for us. So we kind of handle that across the board for you. So now that that is named chat, let's go to our side menu here and rename the My Profile page to chat. So let's change this to a chat icon here. And let's call it chat. And then the other thing I wanted to kind of call out is an additional piece of code I added to log in since the last tutorial. Some users were reporting that the user data wasn't loading 100% of the time for them. So on this ionic.auth is authenticated part in our login controller, I made sure to just load the user so that eventually we get that user back and it's populated throughout our project. Uh, and then we go to chat. So we're going to actually set login to our default page here. And we are going to preview this project. And our login page is going to send us straight to chat. And we should see our Gravatar image and our name that we signed up with from the other tutorial. Chat links right to our chat page. Cool. So let's get started building the actual chat functionality. The first thing I'm going to want to do is set up a new Firebase database. So let's go to the Firebase console. You can find that at firebase.google.com. And let's create a new project. We are going to call this Mount Creator Chat. Create Project. We're going to give Firebase some time to bootstrap that. All right, so we're going to want to do two different things while we're still in the Firebase console. The first thing we're going to want to do is set up some security rules for our actual Firebase database. So we're going to go to Database. We're going to go to Rules. And instead of auth not equals to null and for both read and write, we're going to set both of these to true. We're just going to, for right now, let everybody write to our database. If you're creating your app, you probably don't want to do this. But for right now, we want to make sure that it's just open and easy to use. Now, if we click this home button, you're going to be taken back to Firebase here. You can click add Firebase to your web app. By clicking that, it's going to populate your actual Firebase data here. And we're going to give that data to creators so we can add Firebase to our project. So let's go back to Creator here, go to Add-ons, Add to Project for Firebase, and we're going to copy over this information. So the first thing we're going to want to do is copy over our API key, then our auth domain, then our database URL, and for storage bucket we don't have one so we're just going to type none, add Firebase to your project. Now this added all of Angular Fire to your project already, so we can close out of this. You can see down here that we get uh, firebase.enit.js here, and everything's been added to our code settings to get Firebase up and running. So now we can get started with our actual chat design. So the first thing we're going to want to do is drag over a container. Now this container just looks like an empty square right now. It's giving you a drop target to put something else in it. So in there, we are going to want to start putting our chat items. So we are going to use an avatar list item, put it inside of that container. Now the container kind of looks like it disappeared because now it's just got a list in it with this list item. Okay, so let's do a couple things here. Let's go back to the page. Let's remove our padding. And now this is a very important step. We also have to disable scrolling on the entire chat page because we are going to make that container into a scrollable element. And we don't want two scrollable things on the same page. So disable scrolling on that page as well. So now we've got an item here. We are going to want to populate this later with content as well as the user's picture. Okay. And now let's drag over a form. Okay, we're going to delete the toggle, delete the radio. We don't need either of those. Just stay with the message here. We're going to name this message. 
And then I also want to put a button inside of this form. Okay, so let's get a button. We make sure that it is indeed inside the form. And this is gonna be our submit button. Okay, so let's go like this. Let's name it submit. Okay, and now this doesn't look like much. Our stuff isn't pinned to the bottom, our item doesn't have anything. So let's start adding some CSS to our project to make sure that we get this stuff pinned to the top and bottom. So let's name our container add a class to it called top container. And we are going to change this container. We don't want it to be a div anymore. We want it to be an ion dash scroll element. So what that's going to do is it uses Ionics ion scroll to give us a scrollable div. So ion scroll on the tag, top container on the classes. Uh, we're gonna style that in just a second here. And then on this form, we are gonna wanna name that bottom form. Then we're gonna open up our theming and CSS. We've already got some stuff in here from our Ionic auth uh, tutorial but we are going to bring in some CSS for that top container and the bottom form. So here I pasted some stuff in. The top container, we're gonna calculate the height based on 100% of the height minus 96 pixels, which is what this bottom form is gonna wind up being. And we're gonna give that the scroll and let everything else handle here. So save that, close out. And as you can see now, the container is taking up a vast majority of the height here, and that is gonna be scrollable and our form is nice and pinned to the bottom down here. Okay, so let's preview this page. As you can see, this is gonna be scrollable. Once there's extra content in here, we have the message. We're gonna leave. Uh, and actually, small minor thing, let's make this a full width button just to give it a little bit better of a style here. We don't want those rounded edges showing up. All right, now let's go to our chat page controller. And I'm gonna copy over a whole controller that I already wrote here, but it's pretty simple. We're gonna walk through the entire thing. All right, so here's our controller. First, we imported uh, Firebase Array and Ionic User, okay? We're gonna set up scope.data message to be nothing, and that's what we're gonna tie this message box to. Then we set up a Firebase reference, firebase.database.ref.child messages here. That doesn't exist in our database yet, but it will exist once we start querying it and adding things to it. We're gonna do set scope.messages equal to the Firebase array of that reference. So it's gonna get us an array style uh, return from Firebase for all messages. Then we created a function called add message. Add message is gonna do scope.messages.add with the text equal to our scope data message from up here and the email and the name linking to our Ionic user information that's already been populated during the login signup process. Then after that message has been added, we're just going to clear out the message form for them. So overall, super simple controller. Let's start rigging this up to our actual data here. So on message, we're gonna to want to add an ng model equals data.message. Okay, and then we're gonna do something a little bit differently. Normally on a button, you might put like an ng click, but this is a form and we're gonna want that button to work on the actual phone from the keyboard instead of actually clicking the button. So on form, we're going to add a directive called ng-submit. And for that, we're gonna do add message. Okay. So if I save this and preview, what we're gonna see is I can add testing here and I can hit the enter button, AKA the button that would be on your phone to send that message. Now nothing showed up because we didn't hit anything uh, to Firebase for this list item yet. But if we look at our Firebase database over here, we can now see messages has been created with a new ID, with an email, my name, and the text testing. So let's get that to show up in this list item. So for each list item, we're going to want to do an ng repeat. We're gonna to wanna to do message in messages. Okay, and we're gonna to wanna to do a couple different things here. For the content, we are going to want to do, uh, here we're gonna to wanna to do message.name, the person's name. Line two, we want message.text, the actual text for the message. And then uh, we're gonna to wanna to set this to the gravatar of the user. So now gravatar, we have already set up as an add-on in this project from Ionic Auth, and it's gonna give us that Gravatar source equals an email address directive that we can use on an image. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a directive, the Gravatar-src, and we're gonna set that to message.email, 
Then we're going to click this little button right here that's going to open up where we can put that. Now we don't want it on the ion item. We want it on the image source equals avatar image. We're going to save and close that. Okay. Now that that's been created, what should happen is when I preview, we're going to see that test message I already added in there. So I preview, we see my gravatar picture, my name, and the test message. If I click, you know, testing one, two, three again, submit, we're going to see another message. Now, as we start to add data, so one, two, three, four, five, this is now a scrollable element. Now that's due to that ion scroll container that we set up. Now, since we are using a chat app though, if I add like another message down here, most of the time we're gonna wanna scroll to the bottom. So an easy way to do that is I just looked around for an Angular directive that would allow me to scroll easily. And I wound up finding angular.js-scroll-glue. Now, to install this, it says add this like directives to our Angular modules. So we can go back here to our code settings, Angular modules, add a dependency, that adds it here. And then I'm just gonna wanna copy the code from this directive. So we're gonna go to source, scroll glue JS, raw. We're gonna copy all of this just to a local file here. So we're gonna call this scroll glue.js and paste that contents and save it. Now what scroll glue does is it gives us a directive where whenever the scope changes, this directive is going to automatically scroll it to the bottom for us. So all it is is this directive scroll dash glue and we are going to put that on our ion scroll container element. So just scroll glue, no need to give it a value, it's gonna automatically work for us. All right, so as you can see, that automatically scrolled to the bottom for us. Then we're gonna add another message here. So message 57, 56, enter, and it's automatically gonna scroll to the bottom for us. So now we've got full Firebase back chat in our app with Ionic Auth fully up and running. Uh, yet again, this was kind of to showcase what you could do with that container element. And also, I know a lot of people have been asking how to pin stuff to the bottom here. So that was using that custom SCSS along with a container that has ion scroll. So overall, you can use all the methods in this video in your own apps going forward. And as always, if you guys have any ideas for any other weekly tutorials you'd like me to go through, please get a hold of us, send them to me. You can find us at Ionic Creator on Twitter. You find me at Matthew Kramer on Twitter. And we're going to try to start rolling out a lot more of these. Like I said, we're doing it on a weekly basis. So I will catch you guys next time. Have a good one.